Hello, hello, and welcome to my video. So happy you're here today. If this is your first time seeing one of my videos, please feel free to subscribe, click the like button. That way you can see some other videos that I have. It'll let you know when I post new ones. So in this video, I am putting down some collage papers to get started. I'm using a little bit of a smaller piece of paper. It is heavy though. It's 140 pounds. It's mixed media paper. I do like using this paper so it doesn't buckle. And I'm using the fluid satin medium. I think it's Liquitex. It's very easy to apply and I find the thinner layer that I put underneath. I tend not to buckle, but you can see there's a little bubble right there. But I'm just putting down some papers and I'm not thinking too much about it. This is kind of my way into getting started is putting down papers and just getting into the flow of things. So again, I'm using my scraper tool just to kind of get some bubbles out, but it looks like I got a bubble right there, which of course I tried to pull it up and then I ended up ripping the paper, but you know, it adds a little character. I don't get too attached to things like that happening because usually it ends up adding like a cool little characteristic later on. So just layering the paper and I always put a little layer of the medium on top so that it lays flat. It definitely adheres a little better when I do that. I think it just adds a little weight to the top, kind of keeps it down. So this is a jelly print that I made on deli paper. I really love deli paper as a collage piece, collage material because as you can see, it's very uh, durable with the, you know, matte medium or the medium that I'm using, but it's also kind of transparent. So it gives the best of both worlds. So then when I get my papers down, I like to add a little color, a little paint. And I'm mixing that color with a white gesso. I like to use gesso because it is not so opaque and it blends pretty easy and it's cheap and it comes in a very big container. So I like to just play with that. And it adds a little tooth to the pieces without um, adding bulk. But sometimes I do want the opacity of white, so I do use white instead. But for now, this is good to blend with and kind of just play with. So I'm just adding some paint and thinking about my next move. Sometimes I like to remove a little of the paint, as you see here, and I get a little carried away. It's a constant process of editing, adding and removing, adding more, maybe removing a little more, but my process, I try not to get too particular about it because acrylic paints are so forgiving. You can always make another layer on top. So I like to just try a few things, keep going, maybe adjust a little and then try something different. I do like that peach color kind of accents with the aqua blue paper, that kind of greenish blue paper. So a lot of times I'll fall into the trap of doing everything very muted colors. I wanted to take a risk and make a bold statement with this stamp. I'm sorry, with this stencil. It's 
almost like a honeycomb print. So I used black, it's Mars black, and just an easy way to kind of create contrast on the paper. This was another piece of collage fodder I had. It was uh, some acrylic paints on deli paper. I think I used my jelly plate to make that as well. So all these little pieces are kind of scraps from my deli paper jelly plate printing. It's the mono printing, they call it. It's a great way to kind of make very general colors on paper that you can use for collage. So here's my little birdie. This is something that I printed on deli paper from my inkjet printer. And I also sprayed it with some uh, fixative because I have had some experience recently where I put it on the paper and then it bleeds when I put the layer of medium on top of it. So I was trying something new with this one, trying to do a little fixative, see if it helped kind of seal the ink in from the inkjet. I'm just putting a little white underneath so it's a little more noticeable when I put the bird on. Creating some drips from that. Felt like the black was a little bright, so a few drips help kind of blend it in. So there is the bird. I think I printed the bird out at like 40% transparency because I didn't want it to be like super black. So I used the fluid medium to put it down again. And then, as, I don't know if you could see it, but underneath, I had it on the opposite side. I had printed it. So if I pull it up right there, you see how the print, the ink is coming off. So you just have to be careful about your commitment when you use these things. You want to put it down, glue it down, and be done with it. Because then what happens is it'll run, it will get real messy. But it's a great way to print things out royalty-free images, and you can just use them in your artwork. So just kind of blending that bird in. And here's my sentiment that I use, flight. Again, I, I hand wrote this on deli paper, just so I could play around with the lettering. I haven't found a cursive that I like yet, so I've just been playing with the lettering and just put that down with some fluid medium and it just blends right in. It's another piece of deli paper. I have a ton of scraps from my jelly plate and they're great just for little, little pieces of color around. This is a stamp that I found online and I removed the background and then just printed it on deli paper. I think it's in French actually. But if you could see on top, I started being a little aggressive with the medium and it started to smear a little. Just gives you an idea of what it looks like when it smears. And this is some fluid white. So it kind of gives you a contrast to show you how the white really works compared to the gesso. I do like a little bit more pronounced color occasionally. I'm just encouraging the drips to come down a little. And then I went in with some 
gesso to color it in a little darker. So again, it's just nothing's right or wrong. It's just what feels good and looks good to me, to my eye. I generally tend to make art for myself and then just really hope other people enjoy it as well. I feel like that's how everyone should make art. Because if you love it, someone else will probably love it too. So just a few more drips there. And then my last thing I usually do is add in some marks with my paint pens, a little editing, try to draw out some of the details that I see. A lot of times it's just identifying the shapes that kind of show up there. And this is the border I like to add just to kind of give a little contrast. It's with a Derwent Inktense pencil. It's black and then when you wet it, it becomes permanent. So it kind of gives you a little shadow at the edge, which kind of frames the piece. I like how it looks. And then back in with my Posca paint pens, just kind of identifying some of those shapes in there. And then just making some dots with my white paint pen. And then I just drew a little more detail in here at the top. Bring your eye up there a little more with the white paint pen. Just try to keep the eye moving around the piece. And that is the final little adjustment. That is flight with my little bird. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint as much as I have enjoyed sharing it with you. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, so I know that you enjoy these videos and I will make more of them. And I hope you have a wonderful day.